Hey, let me just find out whether we're live yet. I don't know why Facebook is always giving me a really big delay or I'm not even sure. Yes, apparently I am broadcasting live now. Okay, cool. Let me just see. Yeah, there I am. Ha! <laughs> okay. Hi, welcome. Um, today I want to just share some thoughts with you because I'm noticing that things are shifting inside of me. And um, they haven't come to a conclusion yet, or it's like this is like I feel like this is ongoing work that is a reflection of um, ongoing work <laughs> that we are collectively doing. So let me start by um, the feminine in coaching. It's it's one of our it's the name of our eight week program um, where we teach you the foundations of, you know, a couple of the foundational skills of the soul-based coaching modality so that you can use that in the work that you're currently doing. Whether you're coaching, um, a healer, a manager, a teacher, um, or just for yourself in your own life. Um, but why is it called the feminine in coaching, right? Does that mean anything about the masculine and, you know, and, and if so, what? And like all of these questions that it can <laughs> bring up for people. Sorry, I still have a bit of a cough. <coughs> Thanks, COVID. Um, the feminine in coaching is when I first started to put that course together, it was about adding the feminine to coaching. But, you know, over time, it just kind of got abbreviated into the feminine in coaching and this was um, a way of talking about the paradigm shift that happens when we step outside of our dominant um, collective societal paradigms especially in western societies um, that are more based in the masculine paradigm and when I say feminine and masculine I'm absolutely not talking gender um, this is more based in um, like the the ancient um, traditions and theories on for example yin and yang um, where there are um, like complementing qualities and you know corresponding skill sets um, that are part of us as human beings um, but that where you know it's like they're like you know, you know the yin and yang symbol, right? It's like it's two sides of the same thing, but we very much are taught that the one side of this thing is much better and preferable to the other side of this thing. And this is where um, that label of the feminine and the masculine help us to bring attention to what that is actually about, right? And in this case, the masculine paradigm is about um where it's the paradigm where the mind is in charge right it's like the mind um looks at the world um kind of analyzes what's going on um which means you know to kind of take things apart into several bits which is part of our scientific paradigm as well of course um and then you know puts together like a, how can we make this better how can we fix this puts together a plan with a timeline. Um, there is discipline, there's structure there. Um, and it is a, um, a way of, um, it's like a, a, an action goal oriented type of attention, right? And super helpful, super needed, um, super powerful in our world. And it's been kind of the domineering um, paradigm for over the past, a um, couple of hundreds <coughs> of years, I'm sorry. <coughs> um, now, the other side of that is the feminine paradigm, which is more, which is about the body, which is where um, it's more about a flow state. It's more about um, creativity, um, relationships between people. It is about nourishing and tending, um, but, you know, not necessarily in a maternal role. Um, it's about really honoring the process of um, or the cycle of birth and life and death um, 
also in the crea creative cycle, right? So destruction, um, chaos, not knowing is part of that. Um, it's also um, connected with the dark darkness. Um, and, and it can be that kind of destruction and, and not knowing and, and um, falling apart part of the life cycle. But it's also when we think about seeds that are growing, their first, like their germination, their sprouting happens in the dark. Um, same with babies um, that are conceived. They grow in the womb, in the dark. And so it's also, it's not a bad place. Darkness is not bad in any um yeah, not in, in not in its essence. Um, it is what nourishes the conception of life, right? It's like the the, the fertile container of where life can start. And so, this is what we're talking about in our work. It's about how can we you you know bring make space for the feminine, so that we can um, use both of these um, to really help clients get to powerful changes and when I talk about that um, the funny thing is that what we are wanting to make space for is this creative life force energy like the life's intelligence that is part of each and every one of us it's like the most powerful it's the thing that drives you it's um, the most powerful force in all of earth um, and that is like allowing that creative flow to happen. That is like a very feminine, um, has a very feminine quality to it in the sense of like that is that that create creative cycle, that is that life cycle. Um, and the masculine qualities of uh, structure and um, support and witnessing, these are, funnily enough, the skills that we teach you so that we can make space for the feminine for our clients. And so um, that is how we look at that. Now, on top of that, um, or, or kind of my ongoing process around this um, has to do a lot with, okay, so those labels for those paradigms, they're handy, they're useful for starting conversations but of course they are very close to all and any thoughts around gender that we have and um, both conscious and subconscious um, and that masculine paradigm I'm, I'm more and more starting to wonder if this is if there isn't a better way to start painting that picture because it is um, bringing, bringing me back to this paradigm of capitalism, colonialism, white supremacy and, and patriarchy that has kind of created these systems for us over the last 500 years that mean that those kinds of qualities are um, favored and and seen as good and strong and, and as leaders um, so maybe we have to go back a little bit further um, and look at it in a, a little bit of a wider context and start to see that the work that we're doing in you know, that paradigm that I was mentioning capitalism colonialism white supremacy and and the patriarchy it's like um, a very toxic mix of um, beliefs and practices um, that is so inherently built into our world that we're not even aware of it, right? And it's like it's like fed by or started by this idea of you know I take what I want because I can without you know any you know without regard for consequences um, or for the whole system or looking at all future generations for example and even though I find myself to be someone who is not involved in any of those of that kind of taking I actually am on a very daily level in a very 
wide variety of domains. So to give you my absolute shocking insight, um, and maybe you're aware of this already, but it's the, I, my mind, I, which is I, right? Rather than I, but I have ideas and thoughts that I then make my body do. I extract from my body what I want it to do without regard for how tired it is or whether there's energy and not really adhering to the natural cycle of um, exertion and rest. Rest is a revolution in our world, right? And, you know, of course, I've done all sorts of personal work on um, boundaries and energy management and, you know, discipline and all sorts of things. But it's still true that part of my you know, the makeup of my, almost my DNA, it's like, it goes right down to a very deep level. There is like an, I am capitalizing on my own body, right? And so this is an example of how that paradigm has been internalized in me within so, so, so many of us, right? And to give you another example, um, when we look at how we relate to our earth, right? The planet that is giving us all of the resources that we need to live, right? food, shelter, clothing, um, fuel to keep us warm, all of that. Um, the way that we are in relationship with that is about, I take what I want because I can, regardless of the greater whole and all future generations. And I'm a willing complicit in that. I don't want to, but I am, right? Because when we look at the picture, and maybe you've heard of this, it's um, something called Earth Overshoot Day. Um, it's the day each year where when you look at all the resources that have been used, like the natural resources that have been used globally by that day are the same amount as the Earth can generate and regenerate in the whole full year. And so Earth Overshoot Day was, I think it was July 29th in 2021. So that means that we used seven months collectively to go through the resources that our earth can generate in a full year. So we're living five months on overdraft. And this is not an exception, I can tell you, of course, you know. And of course, you know, the wealthy West is using far more resources than a lot of other places on the earth. So again, it's like super, um, there's, there's a big um, in, um, difference there in terms of impact. But we're all doing it, right? When we're eating food that isn't local uh, or not in season, when we're buying new clothes, whereas maybe we could use um, re, you know, pre, pre-owned or pre-loved or whatever the labels are, um, or just use what we have. And um, when we think about like little things for in our house, like so the level of consumerism is 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 just is absolutely unsustainable. And we know it, and yet we do it, right? And so again, that is that that paradigm totally internalized into our everyday life. And so one of the things that I'm seeing with soul-based coaching is that there is um, a way of, um, you know, I can't step outside of that paradigm, right? It's so ingrained, it's in the air we breathe, it's in the waters that we swim in, it's like everywhere. But using the soul-based coaching skills, there is a way um, for me to actually open up this, this sacred space for my clients where they can start to find openings that are not driven by that paradigm. And that makes this work really powerful. Um, and also it, it shows you why, though in its essence it's simple work or the tools are simple, actually using that and actually um, becoming really, really good at soul-based coaching is not easy. Right? It's like the process is really simple and elegant and powerful, but learning to use it, you have to address that paradigm shift in yourself. And um, it's not going to break that whole patterning in yourself, although it will help, but you will learn to use your skills to 
make that possible for your client creating these spaces where more life can flow in and that is so healing and powerful for people to experience and this is why I feel that just talking about the feminine and the masculine might not cut it anymore um, but I would love to hear what you think um, because this is this is a really big conversation um, and of course you know it's it's ongoing and I'd love to welcome your thoughts on it all right okay let's see you in the comments bye bye